Hey, what's going on, everyone? Static here. Welcome back to another episode of Most Owner Generations Ultimate. We are getting right back into it. I am trying out a new way of recording my videos. I'm using the same software, but I've gone into the advanced settings and changed some things around so that the audio is recorded a bit differently. So hopefully it should give me some more freedom to edit the audio in editing properly so that I sound all right and the video, the actual game audio sounds all right hopefully so we'll try that out here hopefully i sound better than usual hopefully the game sounds better than usual you can hear me over the game well without any normalization problems like last episode hopefully we're good to go we will see by the end of this video but with that out of the way it is time to get into the actual game our goal for this episode is to fight all three of the dudes we've unlocked that might be a little bit uh, ambitious but I think we can do it. Uh, let's see... Doesn't look like we have any actual good food this time around, that kind of sucks. We'll just go with this one, because Gameth probably won't hit me all that much, so stamina would be more important. Um, we have... Yeah, we have what we need, okay. Make sure we're good to go. I believe we are. Let's let's get right into it. No time to waste, because fighting all three of these guys will take probably the entirety of the video, and we'd still be pushing an hour, if I had to guess. Whoa, we get a full cinematic cutscene with this. I guess that makes sense, because this guy is pretty integral to the main story of the game. The Fated Four all are. This looks pretty cool. This is a pretty damn good cutscene, considering... Like, all things considered. What year this came out in, and the fact that it's a Switch game. Primarily the fact that it's a Switch game. That is a really good looking cutscene, wow. Oh, I'm excited. My least favorite of the Faded Four, but I don't particularly dislike him. I just think he's not all that exciting. Let's go ahead and get our resources here. And let's track him down. I believe he should be spawning in Zone 8. I am going to try specifically well on this guy. To parry him. Number one, because I know that I am not used to it. And that's the whole point of the series, to get used to it. And number two, if you noticed, while we were still in the main menu, you might notice that my rank has increased on my main profile. Because over the last couple of days, I've been playing some more on my main profile. And I was actually playing online with a group of three random people. And we fought some, we fought some dudes that are incredibly, incredibly hard. Like way, way, way above anybody we have unlocked right now. And we tried fighting one of them twice, and I think another one of them twice. And we lost all four times. And part of the reason we lost, at least for two of those four attempts, was, I, I feel, uh, completely on me. I, I felt like I really let the team down there. On one occasion, I was the last guy to die. And on two occasions, I think that same one too, I was two of the four deaths we had, and that was a horrible feeling. I really felt like I let the team down on that one, and it really made me realize what I already knew. Which is that I still have such a long way to go before I'm really good at the game. I'm good, but I'm, oh, I'm nowhere near great. I still have such a long way to go. But, one of the guys we fought, why I'm telling this story, is the deviant version of this guy. It was Elder Frost Gameth. So, some of the moves that Elder Frost has should be the same as regular Gameth. Now, to be fair, out of the two guys we fought, Elder Frost Gameth, I suffered on the least. But it's still a fact that I did suffer on him. We were fighting EX Deviants, which basically means that almost every attack that they have is a one shot. So, of course, it makes sense that I died. Like, it's not like it's unexpected, and I'm I'm sure that my teammates didn't feel like I threw. 
but I I hold myself to a higher standard than I would hold other people to be fair I, I because I was the one that died on those occasions I really feel bad about it if it was somebody else in my position I know I wouldn't really blame that on them it's an EX deviant of course it hits hard of course it's it's really hard to beat it makes sense that you would die even with a team of four people and with an extra life if it was somebody else I wouldn't mind it at all so I I, I understand but still it wasn't somebody else it was me and I, I hold myself to that higher standard I should have been better I should have done better so that reinforces my goal for this series which is to get better I need to get better okay that seems like an unparryable attack because I did successfully parry his ground slam but then the actual like shockwave after the slam is what just hit me there so that attack I cannot parry unless I'm far enough away that the only attack I'm parrying is the shockwave not the slam itself I didn't know that before because I don't parry this guy I know what he's doing here but I don't know the timing so I don't know how to deal with it oh he's roaring anyway never mind so anyway with that tangent out of the way I'm gonna start uh, commenting actually on the fight at hand here we're fighting Gameth who is my least favorite out of the Faded Four I know I've said that a few times I'm going to purposely try to parry him even though I know I don't have to because I want to get better at fighting Gameth and I want to get better at fighting Elder Frost Gameth but still I think my primary form of attack is still going to be as is which would mean attacking from the back that is a strategy that also works on Elder Frost Gameth although to a lesser extent because Elder Frost does have attacks that go behind him a lot uh, easier and better than regular Gameth does but still for the most part attacking from behind on Elder Frost Gameth works well so I'm going to keep up that strategy but I'm going to purposely try to parry attacks that I would normally just dodge out of the way if I can just for the sake of learning it so I can get better fighting this guy I'm hoping this fight won't take too long because I'm expecting and hoping to do all three okay that fucking sucks all three uh, in this episode holy shit I, I hate this dude's AOE shit I mean it makes sense because he's an elephant so of course it's gonna be like very big radius heavy attacks but it's just fucking annoying It doesn't seem like we're doing a whole lot of damage though, because as I explained, I think last, no, not last episode, it was the one we fought with Chris. I talked about how I used to use breaking body parts as a landmark to know how much damage I'm doing. That, that's still true. That still holds up now. So the idea that we haven't broken a single one of his legs tells me that we really haven't been doing a whole lot of damage to him. We haven't broken any part of his body despite how much we've been hitting him. And I, I think a reason for that it's because I've been spreading my hits around a lot and hitting him in the chest. If we were to hard focus one of his legs, we might see a different result. Let's see if we can pull something out here. Because I want an indicator that we're actually hitting him. Alright, dude. This son of a bitch. I don't like Gameth. Again, it makes sense. He's an elephant, or a mammoth rather. So the fact that his radiuses on his attacks are massive makes perfect sense but it doesn't make it any less annoying to watch and witness. This dude just swings his head around and it covers half the zone. Like, all right, man, okay. why we're probably not doing much damage is because the only weak spot we can hit is his head and I'm not really in the position to hit him a lot of the time. 
a big another reason why I don't like this guy is because a lot of his attacks we've already been hit by it like three times this mission, but a lot of his attacks just like attack several times in a row. Like that attack that I parried when he slammed down, it still hit me because that attack was two hits in one. He has the actual slam down, and if you avoid that, you can still get hit by the shockwave he emits by hitting the ground. He's got a lot of attacks like that. And again, it makes sense, because he's massive, so he's really heavy. And it's kind of a way to make up for the fact that he doesn't really have much agility. He attacks uh, a lot more aggressively with uh, his hits, because it's so much easier to avoid a lot of his shit. It makes sense. But again, it doesn't make it any less frustrating to get hit by it. I'm not going to complain about it because I, I think that they did like the best they could, but I'm still going to groan at it. We did break one of his legs though, so of course complete apparently. Nice! Just barely missed his head twice because he backed up. That's so cool. I love it when that happens. I'm just kidding. I hate it when it happens, actually. I really hate it a lot. Yep, there it is. There's the prime example. I sheathed his head attack, but then he also had snow coming out of the ground, and that is what hit me. That makes it really, really hard to parry him, now that I'm really realizing it and thinking about it. Because if I parry... Okay. If I parry one thing... He could just still hit me with the exact same attack one millisecond later, just with a completely different hit. Which making makes those attacks unparryable, unless I'm purposely parrying the final hit on that attack. And that is a matter of placement. Hellblade Glavinus has one attack like that, and only the G-Rank version of him. But regular Gameth is just like that. I really don't like that. I thought that snow would hit me. I'm not sure why it didn't. I thought for sure that counted as a hit if you were close enough. Broke the snow off, and looks like he's limping. So far, even despite how badly we've been kind of doing, we are still falling in the time parameters I expected. I was hoping that these fights would take an average of a about 15 minutes and we are coming up on 10 minutes right now and we already have him limping so that's a pretty pretty damn good sign we should be able to fit all three fights into this uh this episode of this right and astalos should probably go quicker because i'm better at fighting him than gamut mizutsune will probably take the longest even though i have more experience on mizutsune he's just inherently a lot harder than gamut is Especially for somebody who counterattacks. Because getting the placement and the timing and the angle of his attacks is really hard, unless you have a lot more experience on him than I do. So that only took a little bit over 10 minutes. We actually did that faster than I was expecting. Definitely not the cleanest run by any means, and my attempts to parry him mostly failed, because even when I succeeded, I still got hit right afterwards. So it looks like, uh, hmm, let me think about it. I'm just trying to think ideally, would Longsword be a good weapon to use on this guy if that's how he attacks? I'm not really sure. Now that I know that from this series, I might, in my main profile, spend some time fighting him with other weapons and see if I can get a better result using other shit. Because if Gameth is a monster, that like half of his attacks, if not more, have several hits to them, then parrying becomes kind of unideal in a lot of situations. Like, it's not impossible to parry, because again, if you know the monster, you know where those hits come in contact, and you know, okay, I can parry this specific hit in this combo, and that will still keep me safe from the other hits. Whether that mean that you're parrying the last one, or you're just parrying one in the middle and the other ones won't hit you, Either way, if you know the monster, you know you can do that. So it's not impossible to fight him with Longsword. But if there's other weapons that would do better inherently, I might as well just use those. 
I, I might as well just use a weapon that would be better fighting him in general, rather than trying to force Longsword to do it. Because there's some weapons that are just better at fighting some monsters than others, and that's a fact. Okay. Well, anyway. We'll, we'll think about that later. We, this is not the last time we'll see Gameth in this series. And it's not the last time I'll see Gameth personally. Definitely. So, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it later. For now, let's fight somebody that I really enjoy. Gameth, I relatively dislike. Mizutsune, I thoroughly like. Although he's probably going to kick my ass, I'm going to be honest. But that's what we're here for. We are here to learn how to fight monsters that I'm not good at fighting. Mizutsune's moveset is really wild, jumping all over the place. The way his body moves makes it really hard to predict what he's doing. He's a very tough monster, especially for someone who thrives on counterattacking and parrying. So this will be a struggle, but that's the whole point. We are here to learn, so I'm going to try purposely to pay attention to his moveset, see if I can pick up some patterns, and learn how to parry him at least a little bit more than I normally would. Because I almost don't parry him at all, usually. We'll see. Here is hoping for the best. I'm excited. I'm really excited to fight the rest of these three in this uh, this episode. He's probably going to have a cutscene too. Yeah. These cinematics are super good. Like, they're super cool. I especially love the coloring on this one. Haha, <laughs> look at that. He's so cool. That bubble blight that he has, by the way, I didn't mention it at all when we fought him before. I'm trying to save the explanations of some of this shit when we're actually fighting them. But that bubble blight is unique only to Mizutsune. He's the only monster that has that, and it makes you slip and slide around. If you get hit by that bubble twice, bubble blight kicks in, and you can't really attack all that well, you can't move all that well, you can't do much all that well, it makes you pretty damn vulnerable. So the goal is to not get hit by the bubbles too much. If I had Cleanser, that would be alright, but I'm not using Cleanser. You guys should know me by now. I don't use tools, I don't use equipment. That snow we were getting affected by, I probably should have pointed that out as well. Gameth has the ability to snow you, which, as you could see from last fight, means you basically just can't move until the snow goes away. If you use Cleanser, you can get rid of it immediately, or you have to wait out the time. I could have brought Cleanser, I chose not to. Just like I'm choosing not to bring Cleanser this time to deal with Bubble Blight. Just how I play him, man. Just how I do it. I will just simply not get affected by Bubble Blight, and if I do, I will deal with the the, uh, the consequences. Okay. I'm probably going to be pretty quiet on this fight because, unlike Gameth, this dude does require a lot more concentration. This guy is not easy. I'm not doing too bad trying to build up the Valor, is my goal right now. I'm really trying to keep an eye on him to try and see if I can avoid his attacks right. There's a deviant version of this guy as well, and he kicks ass. I, I need to learn how to fight Mizutsune before I can properly fight Soul Seer Mizutsune. Yep, prime example. Alright. Good hit, good hit. Alright, Bulfango. Nice. I don't usually parry Mizutsune, so any parry I get I feel is a W. Even though that was pretty easy tack to parry. That was not. I almost parried that too early. That was really close. Okay. We are so far succeeding at our goal. I am hard focusing on his moveset to try and figure this shit out. I don't think I'll be picking up any attack patterns in this fight. Okay, shit. So I don't know if I'll be able to pick up which attacks he likes to do after which attacks to uh, predict him before he even does it. But hopefully we can at least try and learn something about noticing what attack he's doing when he starts doing it. That way we can react accordingly. So predicting is a little bit beyond my scope of experience right now. But reacting? Maybe not. Shit! That's a two-hit attack. 
I parried the first bite and the second one still hit me. That sucks. That really sucks. So we'll need to get our placement better on that attack so that we can parry it without getting screwed. If we can back up so that the first, uh, the first bite misses and then we parry the second, that would avoid that issue and still give us the parry. Oh, I got hit with the first bubble. One more, and we're affected by bubble blade. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that uh, made me cringe real hard. I, I, this guy's moveset is elusive to me. I don't know what he's doing half the time. Okay, I'm not doing horrible. All right, that sucks. Perry? Never mind. Oh shit. Let's, uh, let's get out of here before we get screwed. Oh, can you hit me out of it? Ah, uh, hey, my man! Nice. Let's, uh, let's sharpen. Okay, cool. Uh, what are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. I know what you're doing now, though. I don't know how to do... Okay, the deflect! Alright, we're fine, we're fine. Shit. What did I just get fucking deflected by? You mean to tell me I hit his talon on the other side of his body while I was standing by his waist? Like hell I did. Are you kidding? What is going on? Oh, I know what he's doing. I probably could have parried that if I had Valor, actually. That's pretty cool. Too bad I didn't have Valor. Son of a bitch! How am I missing that shit? Stop with the deflect shit. Come on now tired. I didn't get deflected at all at the start of the fight, but now I'm only targeting his big talon. It's like I can't hit any other part of his body. I was literally at his waist on the other side of his body, and still somehow hit and got deflected off of his talon. Like actual hell, there's no way. Oh, he's eating? That's a free period? Let's work on his tail. Uh, that wasn't a sever, but it was a break. Broke his tail, so if we break it one more time, that should be the sever, I believe. He's still tired because we interrupted his eating. What are you doing? Oh, you're not tired anymore because he's enraged. Well, okay, my attack went straight through his leg and didn't damage him. I saw that in the real time. Where am I? What's going on? What is going on? And that's that's the sever. There goes his tail. Awesome. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. That was a horrible parry on my part. I can't see shit. What are you doing? I don't know what you're fucking doing! What is going on? I don't know! Oh, holy shit. I didn't want to roll in this direction, game. What, what the fuck are you doing to me? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on! I don't know your fucking moves! I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. What are you doing? I- what the fuck is going on? I'm trying so hard to like know what is happening, but it's all just like his body spazzing out and then he's flying across the map. I don't- I don't fucking know. Like when he starts the attack, I can- I can tell like, okay, I know what he's doing. But then he'll do like three more similar shit in the same combo, and I don't know which one he's going to do in which order. Okay. Alright, we're still doing alright. We are doing alright. We've surprisingly done pretty good damage to him. 
despite all this shit. Because I don't know his moveset that well, and his moveset is really confusing to know what he's doing, so I'm panicking a lot. Panicking a lot. But at the end of the day, I do know my weapon, I know how to play the game at the fundamentals, so even if I am not great at him as a monster, I can still at least like brute force my way through and handle my way through based on reaction and just trying my best to adapt at the moment. So we are getting our ass beat in the sense that I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm at least like decent enough at the game itself that I can feel my way through just barely. Just because I don't know Mizutsune doesn't mean we're going to die and lose here. We're still going to kill him at, like, pretty decent time. It just means that we're not going to kill him very cleanly, and we might have a lot more problems than we would on Seiko Venus. This, uh, out of the four guys, this dude I'd say is the hardest. Part of that would be because I don't know him very well. But part of that would also be because I just simply think Mizutsune is the hardest. There's no no monster that has this kind of moveset like this. Like, Astalos attacks real wildly and wackily, and he has his own, like, tough shit of his own. But he doesn't have a inherently challenging and tricky moveset like Mizutsune, where it's hard to tell what he's doing because of the way his body is contorting, and he's flying across the map real quickly while sp like spamming effects everywhere that even confuse you more so than that. A Astalos is tough in his own right, but he's not like this. So out of the four, I'd definitely say Mizusane is the hardest. Especially for someone whose instinct is to get in the way of the attack so I can parry it, but I've got no clue what he's doing, so when I try to do that, I just kind of lock up and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? It doesn't help that he's been enraged for a lot of the fight, which means his attacks are going to be a lot more ferocious. What are you doing? Okay, alright. I, I don't know what the fuck is happening. I don't actually know at all what he was just doing there. I did that way too early. I'm so fucking dumb. Why did I do that like that? I don't even know if that counts as iframes, if you're bubble. I'm not really sure. I don't know what the fuck just happened. I'm so confused. All right, <laughs> the kind of kind of a sad anticlimactic ending because I killed him with a poke to the face. But overall, that fight was very fun. I was panicking the whole time because I don't know this guy's move set, and he's been enraged for like half the fight because of the damage we we're dealing to him. But overall, not a bad fight. Didn't die. In fact, we didn't even use any of our potions. We only used the first aid meds. So. Despite how I sounded, we still avoided a lot of his attacks pretty well. I just didn't get very many parries off, which is really the disappointing thing here. I need to fight this guy a lot more than I have to really like get his moveset down and be confident enough to see him doing this wild, wacky, spinning around shit and say, oh yeah, I know what he's doing, I know where he's going, and I can parry it. I'm nowhere near that level on Mizutsune yet. Even... Even less so on Soul Seer Mizutane. Way less so on Soul Seer. I still have such a long way to go before I can really call myself great at this game. I still have so much more to learn. So many more monsters to master. The only one that I've mastered is Glavinus. That's the only one that I've honestly and truly broken down to a complete science. There's a lot of other guys I'm good at. But nobody that I've actually mastered besides Glovinus. So much more to learn. So much more practice to go. But I aim to get there. And a part of this series, a big goal of this series, as I always say, is to pursue that objective. You get any more ingredients? Nope. 
Then what was this upgrade for? Hey, exquisite rice! Yep, that's big. Exquisite rice is the best food in the game. We'll be getting this every single mission now for the remainder of the entire series. Unless there's a specific mission that we want to get a specific skill for. Exquisite rice bangs so hard. They want to click that. Okay, and I didn't get anything useful. Cool, dude! With that being said, let's go get uh, exquisite rice. Our first, uh, our first exquisite rice meal, which is so fucking good. Alright. Now, let's go for Astalos. This guy, I actually fairly know. I'm not great at his moveset, but I have fought him a decent bit. And there was one mission that I needed to do for a Deviant Quest line that requires you to fight a Hyper Astalos. So I fought Astalos a few extra times to try and help me prepare for doing that mission. So, I, I have some Astalos experience under my belt. Enough that hopefully this won't go too damn bad. Let's jump right into it. We're making pretty good time. It is 31 minutes in, which is about exactly where I was expecting to be. So that's uh, pretty damn good. Oh yeah, another cinematic. Completely forgot about that. Look at this guy. These cinematics, uh, they look really good. You wouldn't expect to see this in a Switch game. Look at him go. If you're a lightning fan, you'll like this. actually blood on his mouth? No way. I didn't expect him to do that. <laughs> they actually put the blood on Astalos' face after he demolished that dude. That's surprising. I didn't think they'd do that. Good for them. There he is. I really... I really like what they did to him for Rise. I didn't like his fight so much because throughout the entirety of Rise and Sunbreak, literally from start to finish, I and everybody that I played with on Discord, all my friends, had like the absolute worst RNG luck from all the way beginning to end. Every single one of us. It was absolutely wild. So when me and a friend of mine fought Astalos in that game, the fight ended up being really cringe and annoying, despite how good it should have been and we can tell it should have been. But his visual design in that game was absolutely remarkable. It makes this design look like kind of lackluster. The way that they had like the the lightning in his body like crackle throughout the entirety of like the color spectrum, like changing all throughout the rainbow colors through his whole body, you can see pulsing through him. So good. Looked amazing. We played the game on PC too, so we were getting that full on 4K Ultra HD experience. So fighting him in this game, he definitely it's like, oh man, he's kind of missing that flare. But even still, he does look good. He does look good and he does look cool. His Deviant version though, his Deviant version in this game looks almost as good, if not as good, as regular Astalos does in Rise, in my opinion. Like it invokes the same feeling of awe looking at him. Bad, uh, bad play on my part. I need to go heal because he could stun me and parry me, or not parry, paralyze me at any moment. And if I'm low on health and he does it to me, I'm gonna start crying about it. Alright, cool, dude, you fucking bastard. We might, we might get our ass beat a little bit harder by this guy than Mizutane did. Maybe? Like, now that I'm seeing it, just because, like, Astalos, again, he is challenging his own way. His moveset isn't as inherently hard as Mizutane, but he still, he still hits hard, he's fast, he's ferocious, and he's got Lightning Blight, which increases stun chance, and Paralysis, which is, like, stunning except worse. So, in his own right, Astalos poses, like, just as much of a threat, if not more. Easier to fight than Mizutane, but just as threatening in his own way, effectively. 
As long as we can get into the flow and start parrying them the way that I normally do, this shouldn't be an issue. But of course, that's just not how it's going this time around. Because fuck it, why would it? That doesn't make sense. Let's just have another Malfestio situation. Fight somebody I know how to fight, and then still have it go absolute god-awful bad for no reason. Fuck it. There's a couple of other parries that uh, I would normally pull off. Alright, I tried to parry that, and the game didn't let me. I think I tried to parry it literally as soon as the attack hit me, which is super unlucky. There we go. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I told you I know how to parry this guy. I, I can do it. I don't, I don't know why I was failing to pull it off the whole start of the fight. But there we go. That was like a proper fight. Where's he going now? Going to three. Ran out of Valor, which really sucks. But we got some really good parry counters on him there and broke his head, so we have a pretty good head start on damage, it seems. I'm surprised he hasn't done the double hit. Maybe that's not a low rank thing? I thought it would have been, though. He's only done the single. The single slam. Still only the single slam. Usually he would slam down, and then like back up slightly and do it again with the other wing. That's usually like a, a whole package combo. I'm surprised he hasn't done it at all, unless he can't. I didn't think that was a uh, G rank thing, though. I thought that would have been like any rank. He also hasn't done his, uh, Paralysis Tail attack at all. Don't know why. Normally he'd do it instantaneously the moment the fight starts. That would've killed me if that was Bolt Reaver. That would've insta-killed me. I, I know that attack from Bolt Reaver. I got confused, confused the fuck out of myself. I'm really surprised I haven't uh, gotten stunned yet because I've been lightning blighted the whole fucking fight. Even though I know how to fight this guy better than Mizutsune, I'm still getting my ass beat harder. I couldn't tell you why. Couldn't tell you why at all. Alright, I parried that right, but because of where I was standing, didn't fucking work. Nice. You can tell that I can fight this guy better. I parried Mizutsune like three times total, and I've already parried this guy more than that. Pretty consistently. I don't know why I'm taking the piss so hard, in general. I don't know where he went. He could have gone fucking anywhere. 9, 4, 2, or 5. I guessed right, alright. Oh, he's eating. Well, shit. Can we get there in time? I don't know how long Astalos eats for. Some monsters eat real fast and some take a while. Uh, it doesn't matter, we knocked him out of it, dumbass. He still hasn't done the double slam, only the single. Is that not something low rank Astalos can do? I know how to parry that attack. One big hit, bam, nice. Broke his wing. Nice, of course. As soon as he becomes like available to get hit, because now he's just standing in his place, my sharpness goes down. Every. Single. Fight. This whole series. It's like the game waits until they're vulnerable and then forces me to either do no damage at all or do barely any. Like why, man? Alright, cool. Doesn't even matter. Yep, we killed this guy. Despite my, me getting my ass beat, we still killed this guy the fastest out of three. I, 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 I couldn't tell you. I couldn't fucking tell you.
I didn't use any of my healing against Mizutsune. I did on this guy, Mega Potion and Regular Potion. But we still killed him faster, noticeably faster. Couldn't tell you at all. I don't know. Just how the game goes, I guess. Well, there we go. That was the Astalos fight. I had a lot of fun this episode. I really did. Between fighting Astalos, who is somebody I actually know how to fight, and seeing him be as cool and ferocious as I remember him being, albeit not as fast, because I've gotten used to so much faster. Still really cool to see him like that. Still really cool to fight him back here at the start of the game again. Fighting Mizutsune, trying to learn his moveset a little bit more, but failing really hard because Mizutsune's moveset is just super tricky for me. And panicking because I thought he was going to destroy me, but I would barely dodge it every time by accident. Even Gameth, like Gameth is... Gameth's got an, an annoying moveset somewhat, and he's not that exciting. It's, you just wail on him till he dies. But he's still really cool. Still, I think his moveset, despite how annoying it is, does fit the monster. And he's really well done. I, I do kind of like Gameth. I don't enjoy fighting him, but I respect him as a monster. So all three monsters we fought today, I enjoyed fighting. To varying degrees. I had a lot of fun this episode. And now we're about to see who the Urgent is, I think. I was wrong. Never mind, I wasn't wrong. We gotta talk to these red bubbles first. Alright, let's do that then. Let's see what they have to say. Let's also talk to this individual. There's a lot of yellow. Okay. I don't know if I want to do that, actually. Did I kill the Astalos? Yep, I did. Stuck in stone! Did I unlock the, uh, thing over here? Pull out the sword. Hey! I will never use this weapon. <laughs> that is a weapon I will not be using. But, uh, it's cool that I have it. Let's go visit Poke. I know what we unlock from this. We unlock the ability to interact with that giant greatsword, which I think is a Fatalis greatsword. Which is why it keeps regenerating, because Fatalis is technically immortal. Alright, let's talk to you. Yep, I killed the Gameth. Yep, yep. And you want me to interact with that Fatalis greatsword. Sure, let's do that. I probably won't really be using this thing all that much in this series, but this is a very uh, useful tool. Yeah, this is like a sword, as far as I'm aware, that's like made out of Fatalis parts or something to that effect. Fatalis is supposedly immortal, so the weapons made out of him would regenerate, as far as I'm aware. So you can come down here every once in a while and harvest parts off of that sword. And you can use that to make shit. On my main profile, which if I do switch to my main profile in this series, you'll probably see it. I have a Fatalis armor set that I used for my greatsword build. And I used a lot of that sword, uh, Fatalis sword's pieces. I had to farm that sword out for quite a while to get it. So it is a pretty useful tool. But since I'm probably not going to be making that build in this profile, you probably won't see me grinding it at all. I don't think I unlocked anything for fighting Mizutsune, though. But now we got a red bubble at Burna, which will be the urgent quest. Uh, let me see if there's anybody I really want to talk to here. No, not really. I'll take care of those yellow bubbles on my own time. Just interacting with all of them and getting rid of it. I don't want to do that right now. Have you guys figured out who the uh, urgent's going to be? It's Glavinus, part of the Faded Four. This is the final monster of the Faded Four, and the one that I enjoy the most, as you could probably guess, based on how hard I flex on him all the time. You know what? Do you think we could fit this in this uh, this episode? I don't know. I, I don't know. I could probably kill him in under 10 minutes, but... Ah, no, we won't. We, we, we won't. We'll save it for next episode. Uh, I'll let you uh, let you get excited and get ready for it. Next episode, we'll start off with Hunting the Venus. And then whatever that unlocks, which I'm assuming will be six star probably. 
we will start uh, getting back on the grind, working through the story. I will probably be farming the Venus out for his armor. We're still using three-star armor. We have been this whole fucking time. But once we unlock the Venus, we will farm out his set and get the whole Venus armor. So then our, our, we'll be caught up in armor level. And we should be good to go. Let's take a look at the other armor sets here just so you can see what they're like. Gameth actually gives more defense than Glavinus. I'm not surprised by that. Look at that. A lot of these armors look really cool. I'm not a big fan of the Gameth armor because it's very heavy and tanky for obvious reasons. But the Astalos armor I think looks really cool. The Mizutsune armor I do like. Let's see. There's the Gameth arms. Big and tanky again. Astalos arms I'm not a big fan of. I don't like the shape. But the fact that it glows like that is super cool. There's a lot of armors in this game that glow. Something like that. And I think Astalos is the first one we've unlocked that does that. But it won't be the last. Don't worry. Gameth waist. Astalos waist. And Mizutsune waist. Game with leggings, again, I'm not really a big fan of that. Astalos leggings, I do like that. And Mizutsune leggings, that really fits the uh, the Japanese aesthetic that they're going for with Mizutsune's armor set very well. So that's what we've done. Super cool. I really enjoyed this episode. Those guys were a lot of fun to fight. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And get ready for next episode, because next episode... You'll see me fighting the guy that I know better than anybody else in the entire game. The one monster that I've truly and honestly mastered. I hope you guys are excited, because I know I sure am. Thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. I really appreciate you stopping by. So anyway, again, thank you. And you guys take care. Have a great rest of your day.